Using the 37 mils in the Stuka, you'll make an approach between the rear and side of the target with at least 500 meters of altitude using a 30 degree dive angle and an entry speed of 300 km per hour which should give you an exit speed of 400 km per hour. And on the way in, you can adjust your path as needed to avoid any anti-aircraft fire. Here are some pictures which show you what a T-34 looks like in the gun sight at various distances as an example. Notice that at 300 meters, it will fill the gun sight regardless of its profile, whether it's side on or from the rear. Having a mental image of this visual cue is important because it tells you when you should shoot based on your convergence. So if you're using the 300 meter convergence, you're going to fire at the 300 meter visual cue. If it's an armor target, you will use armor piercing rounds and you're going to fire three times for a six round burst. And if it's a soft target, you can use armor piercing or high explosive and you'll only need to fire once which will send off two rounds. In this demo, I'll show you why it's important to use the correct visual cue. So we're starting off with the rear profile, convergence is 1000 meters. And if we fire the 300 meter cue, we can see the rounds will actually go off to the side of our target. If we're going for a 500 meter convergence, they'll be a little bit closer, but will still be offset. However, if we're firing at the right cue of 300 and 300, our rounds will go right on target. However, if we use the convergence that's too short for our visual cue, the bullets will cross paths and we'll miss altogether. Now we're looking at the side profile that has more room for error. With a convergence of 1000 meters, both our rounds can still hit the target because we have more surface area. Same goes for 500 meters, but instead the bullets will just get a little bit closer together. If we fire at the correct visual cue, our bullets will hit in the same spot. And again, if we set a convergence too short, our bullets will cross paths and we'll miss the target altogether. So now with some of the basic understanding out of the way, we'll look at a complete Stuka 37mm attack against a convoy. Now before we get started, we want to make sure we have the correct loadout. I'm going to set my fuel to around 70% in order to simulate uh, the fuel burn on the way to a target. And make sure the convergence is set correctly at 300 meters, which is what I like to use. Then we're going to adjust our modifications. Since I'm going to be going up to ground targets, I want to add the extra armor plating. And then of course we're going to select the 37mm gun pods. And since I plan on going after armored targets, I'm going to use armor piercing, which is the blue. HE, or high explosive, are the orange. And notice that we've only got 24 rounds of each, so they're pretty valuable. Now the airplane's all set up. I'm going to hit accept, and then go into the game and begin our attack. So we're in the game now, and the convoy area is over to our 10 o'clock low. You see it there. It's going to be a line of tanks and trucks moving along the road, defended by multiple AA. So what we want to do is you want to be able to team up with fighters, because they're ideal to destroy the enemy aircraft emplacements. And I have two 109s here, they're going to help me out. The other reason you want to avoid it is your 37 mils are valuable, as I mentioned before. So you really want to keep them for use against armor. If you spend them against any aircraft, it can be a waste of time. So let others deal with the AA if it's at all possible. So right now, there's one of nines are making their way over to the target. And I'm just circling off to the side to give them some time to get there and begin attracting the AA file. So now the fighters are in the area, distracting the any aircrafts. It's time to move in and strike our targets. So we'll start bringing the airplane around, we'll have another look-see and see if we can find where our targets are. They should be travelling along that road, so when we get a bit closer they should be easier to see. Now that we're getting closer to the combat area, we want to make sure we start preparing the airplane accordingly. So you want to close your radiators to help reduce any drag on the airplane. This allows you to gain more airspeed in the dive. You're going to set your power to 1.3 atmospheres with 2400 RPM. Now we've zoomed in, we can choose our target and begin to line up on it. I'm not quite in position, so I'm going to offset to the right and have another look at the target before I make my approach. Again, the entry is at 300 km per hour, and we should exit around 400 km per hour. Now zooming in on the first target on the convoy, it's much larger than the others, so this is a KV-1 tank. If 
we approach it from the side on the rear, we should be able to take it out. So we're lined up, fire the 300 meter Q, getting our six rounds on target, we can see that the tank has been destroyed. Now after we made this pass, we want to avoid flying straight as we extend, so we aren't as vulnerable to ground fire. So we're changing our direction while we extend, along with a slight nose up attitude to climb a little bit as we increase the distance. So with all this excess speed, we've put some distance between ourselves and the anti-aircraft, and we've also gained some altitude back. Now we're at a safer distance, so we can continue climbing at a slower airspeed, but you don't want to get too slow, so avoid being slower than 200 km per hour in your climb. This is because the slower you fly, the easier it is for ground fire to shoot you down. Now you don't want to get too far away from your targets, because otherwise each pass is going to take too long but you don't want to be so close as to expose yourself to too much gunfire. So zooming in, we'll pick our second target. I'm going to keep ourselves climbing, get the altitude we want, and begin making our moves to line up on the next target. This time we're going to go for a soft target. So I'm going to choose that truck and then begin my lineup on it. We'll nose it over, begin our dive. And we're holding fire until we reach the right visual cue. Since it's a soft target, we only need one shot. It's going to send two rounds down range and we're going to destroy the target. Again, Remember to change your direction while you extend until you're at a safer distance and then you can regain all your altitude back. It sounded like we just copped a hit from any aircraft, but uh, it doesn't seem like it's affected the controllability of the airplane, so we can continue this. Looking for damage, it looks like the horizontal stabilizer has been hit. So as we swing around, we're going to have a zoom in and look at the convoy, as well as how the 109s are doing. Notice how there's an ammo count in the top left corner. This is something you should keep track of mentally, because using this it lets you know exactly what kind of targets you can take out, and this way you won't unnecessarily waste ammo on a target you're not going to destroy. So now we're a little bit closer, we should have a better sight picture of the convoy. So zooming in, you can see they're still moving along, and I'm going to choose uh, one of those tanks up ahead in the front. So we're going to line ourselves up, roll it over and start diving towards it. Altitude and entry speed is good. Now that tank is still moving along towards the tree, so I'm going to have to be careful that I don't hit it on the way in. Get to our visual cue. Six rounds. It's another tank destroyed. Sounds like I copped another hit there on the way in. The, the airplane still feels good, so we'll keep going. So we manage to dodge at the tree and then begin extending away from the target. Repeat the process again, getting enough safe distance and then lining up on the next target. Now sometimes the tank may not explode. You may end up with just a smoke trail coming out of the top of it. If this is the case, that tank is as good as destroyed. So you might as well just let it burn and eventually it will explode on its own. And this way, you can save your ammunition for more targets. So now with 10 rounds left, I'm good for maybe three more targets. So I'm going to choose one more on the convoy and we'll see what it's going to be. Looks like there's something off on the right hand side there. A little bit closer and I'll zoom in and have another look. 
Then we can see a tank, and then uh, just behind it, it's one of those anti aircraft emplacements still going, so we'll try and get a two for one in the pass. Looks like that we lined up nicely for that to work. So we're coming in, get to our visual queue, destroy tank, and then we can line up on the anti aircraft, and down it goes. Here we see it again, fire those six rounds from the side blow up the tank, we can set ourselves up immediately on the enemy aircraft to take that out as well. So now we've only got two rounds left. So this means all we can get is a soft target. There's no point trying to kill a tank with two rounds because it's just not going to happen. So now we're going to swing back around and now climb. And then we're going to get our last target, which needs to be a soft target, and that'll complete the video. So zooming in, we get a rough idea of where the convoy is at. And we'll start making our way over there. So we'll have another look. You can start seeing, it looks like there's a couple of soft targets clustered together. So we'll make our dive. Zoom in again. Try and discern what they are. One looks like a staff car, so we'll go for that one. Nice easy one to take out. On ourselves up so we don't hit any trees. Get to the queue. Down he goes. So now with all our ammunition spent, we're gonna get the hell out of dodge and go back to the airfields. That completes the video on how to use the 37mm cannons and the Stuka. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, let me know by using the like button or leaving me a comment. And don't forget to be a subscriber.